Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Every wide receiver in the NFL wants to be a top target, and two players will be trying to be that today. It's the Jets going up against the Browns. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. The folks here in Cleveland, even though all the down years, have never stopped supporting their hometown guys, and we got evidence of that a moment ago as the Browns made their entrance. They are ready to do battle with the New York Jets. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. The New York Jets coming off a 20-6 win over the Miami Dolphins. They take the field behind quarterback Josh McCown, who in that Week 3 victory, 249 yards, a touchdown. He did have two fumbles, but they got the win. They got the win, and leading up to the game, the Jets had announced that they were going to be a running back by committee team. And oftentimes when I hear that, I'm like, uh... That doesn't work too well. Have a lead back. In this case, though, Bilal Powell actually served in that role. 15 carries in the game, and then they split up the rest of the carries with Elijah McGuire and Matt Forte, I think eight and seven respectively. They ran it enough to take pressure off of Josh McCown and help him throw the ball downfield. Now a play fake here on first down. Catch here, left side, Thomas. 17 yards for the Jets there as they've got themselves a first down. down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a run. This is Bilal Powell. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Starters on the offensive side of the ball for the New York Jets. Austin Safarian Jenkins did not play weeks one and two, but they got him back for week three. They were so excited to pick up Austin Safarian Jenkins in the offseason and in OTAs and minicamp. He was the guy that there's a whole second. That looks like the guy that came into the league. Lighter, quicker, runs great routes, terrific hands. Yeah, he's going to provide a nice target for Josh McCown and help open up things for the wide receivers with his routes underneath. Opened up things for Robbie Anderson last week. Big 69-yard touchdown reception. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. And now the starting defense for the Browns. When you look at Cleveland's defense in 2016, it's pretty easy to isolate where their problems began. 31st in the league against the run. They finished 31st overall in total defense as well. So you have to start with them shutting down teams running the football to give themselves a chance to make some plays in the passing game. Yeah, it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Here's McCown to throw. And that is incomplete. On is the second year man from Sam Houston State, Lachlan Edwards, to put it away. Jabril Peppers is deep for Cleveland. And 
And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Let's discuss the week Deshaun Kaiser had against Indianapolis in week three as he brings the Browns onto the field. 242 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. So they don't jump off the page, those numbers, but he did almost lead him to a comeback victory. Yeah, it made it a little bit tougher on himself and his team in the third quarter when he threw a pair of interceptions. But that's what you're going to get with a rookie quarterback. You've got to balance the good with the bad and go through the growing pains. I think he's showing really nice promise here early for Cleveland. Kaiser on first down and incomplete to open things up. So the Cleveland Browns, a close loss in Indianapolis. That drops them to 0-3. Here's the offensive starting lineup, and they probably need some help catching the ball for the rookie quarterback, Kaiser. Yeah, because Corey Coleman, their first-round pick of last year, he's on IR, having surgery for a broken hand. Kenny Britt, big-time free agent pickup. Guess what? He had to meet with the head coach, Hugh Jackson, about stepping up his game. Had three catches for 54 yards. And Rashard Higgins was a monster in week two with nine catches, but only came back with two in the last ball game. Consistency is what they're looking for. Now a first carry for Isaiah Crowell. And he'll running right through it. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. Career highs in receptions, carries, and total yards last year for Crowell. His total yardage was 952. That was the highest by a Cleveland Brown running back since 2010. And that sounds impressive, but I think there's much more out there for him. If Cleveland plays even with people, not from behind, he'll get more carries, more touches, and his yardage will go up. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Come on, let's go! One, nine, seven. Again, it's Crowell. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Defensive side of things, the starters here for the Jets and nearly had a shutout week three against Miami. Looked really good. What a difference a week makes because last week, last time out against Oakland on the road, Oakland put 45 on them. Had, to, had the Raiders fans dancing in the aisles as that game went along. And they come back the very next week and only give up a touchdown the last play of the game, right? Devontae Parker scored that one. But that's a big improvement in one week. Second down, here's Crowell. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels to throw Kaiser and the return comes to a halt right at the 44 yard line well, look at that Chuck a rookie picked the rookie on that play how about that is that rookie on rookie crime <laughs> but you know what happens too if you're a rookie defender you tend to adjust to the game a little bit quicker than if you're a quarterback too many things still going through his mind and on that play the rookie defender won the battle. And the Jets set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. So after the INT, it's McCown now. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for our Darius Stewart there. And that'll bring up second down. Right, here we go. 
McCown will try again on second down. His throw incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse, and it's third down. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. Throwing his McCown on third down. Open man is Stewart. It's complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I can never stump you on stats, but go ahead and let the people know. Who was second in the NFL in 2016 in yards per carry? It was that man, Bilal Powell, right at five and a half. He may have had to share some carries in the backfield with Matt Forte, but boy, he took advantage of his touches. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Let's go. Green. They'll run. This is Powell. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. To me, that's a terrific run on first and goal with the three. They got two yards. I'd line right back up and give it to him again. as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. From back at the three now, this is third and goal. Working from the gun, McCown. And he's going to go down, sacked back at the 13-yard line. Larry Ogunjobi in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big-time sack. So on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit for Todd Bowles. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. So three points is the outcome, but probably not what they're looking for given the drive that they were on. Yeah, things were looking good. You had it first and goal, but then the offense sputters a bit, and they're forced to settle for a field goal.
Now after the made field goal, Catton Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. On the return, Jabril Peppers. And there is a flag as he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. But who's this going to be against? Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. seven yard line a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down wow that play got shut down in a hurry as soon as the snap came you can see defensively they were just closing in that was going nowhere yeah you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space a little bit of time so you can make a move there was none there for him Second down, Kaiser. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. And you're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. The eighth-year man from Tennessee. This is Britton Colquitt on to punt. Back deep for the Jets, Jalen Marshall. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And now the Browns get ready as they head back out there. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all. But you're exactly right. They are doing their job, but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You didn't, you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. that. Totally missed it. They start the drive with a give to Powell. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. McCown. going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. And as they say, that's a no-no. Got to be able to understand where you are on the field and not cross the line before throwing the ball downfield. The Jets on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Here we go now. Blue Blue 
From the gun, it's McCown. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, standing right on his own five-yard line. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That's pulled in at the 32. Oh, and now he bowls him over. A terrific return there, 27 yards all told. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. offense they get ready to head back onto the field and the results for them have not been strong to this point two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt so would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement because you had two, <laughs> two drives with turnovers now they punted it away so at least they didn't turn it over so that's good right you're gonna get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media well i don't mean to be i was actually looking for the positive silver lining you know They go play action here on first down. Going deep for Kenny Britt. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary it really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication. Doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. So second and ten here. forward for a couple down inside the 40. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Let's go! From the gun, Kaiser. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Higgins. And he's going to go out of bounds, taking it down inside the 25. A good play there is the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. down carry now for Crowell and he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21 give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game you're now doing the dictating on defense and guess what now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time but you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt They'll run it again with Crowell. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19.
The Browns on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Kaiser. Underneath for Johnson. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And here comes play number six on this drive. First and goal, Johnson. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Second and goal to go now to Johnson again. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. The offense on third down, they've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Kaiser now. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. David Njoku, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns are able to cash in for six. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Zane Gonzalez on for the extra point. This is up and good to make it 7-3. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. On the return, it's Jalen Marshall.
So out now come the Jets. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and, try and think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> the intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And it's second down. one off to Powell and again he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage call it no gain on the run there and now they'll be looking at a third down big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold nothing there yeah when you talk about big boys you talk about those defensive tackles those nose tackles they're not just big they're immense <laughs> and what a big time play there From the gun on third, McCown. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. I know every down's important, but you know as well as I do, partner. Third down is key for both offenses and defenses, and Cleveland's got to get better on third down on D. And what they did right there, you're right, they need more of. They were tied for 30th in the NFL in sacks last year, but a big one there brings up a punting situation. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Back out onto the field now. Here comes the Jet defense. See if they can regroup a little bit. They gave up the touchdown last drive. And you know from our meetings with coaches all across the league, one of their pet peeves, when teams get down, a lot of these guys now, they, they want to treat it like it's a video game or something. Hit reset. Let's start over, coach. Out of the first two series, they don't even matter now. Let's, let's play again. That's not how it works. You're down. You gave up a touchdown. You can't do it again. You have to dig in, grit it out, and fight it out. Reset buttons. It's driving everybody crazy. There are no reset buttons when you're playing in this game. Preach, Chucky. Preach. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Johnson again, and he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Browns on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time, it's third and three. Working out of the gun. Here's Kaiser. And that is incomplete. Here's Britton Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Nifty move. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Jets take possession. 
Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head on to the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They begin with a carry for Powell. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Jets on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and seven. Shotgun here from McCown. Throw left side is taken in by Stewart. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. On second down, here's McCown. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. Some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long. Here we go now. Blue McCown gonna throw. This is caught inside the 15. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. Whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. Offense. So that'll back him up five. Yeah. 
And here comes play number six on this drive. First and goal, defense with their backs against the wall. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. three-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guys. And that's exactly what happened on that play. It was tough on them. And now, instead of being in third and very long, they ended up setting themselves up in third and manageable. They've got a chance at a first down. On the ground, Forte. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll, in fact, tackle him behind the line. Now Forte, I think he's a bit shaken up. Still down on the ground. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. And Catton Zero's kick is right through. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. Spent three years as the kicker for the Arizona Cardinals. Now in New York on the big stage. Kicking for the Jets. 2015, he was great. 28 of 31 on field goals last year. 21 of 28, trying to rebound. And you remember, it was the season opener. A chance to beat the New England Patriots where he missed a makeable field goal. And I think that knocked him off the rails for the rest of that season. To the main field goal, Catanzaro to boot this one away on the kickoff. This is taken about seven yards deep, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Kenny Britt trots back out there as he gets set to go again on offense. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part, but they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers will tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game. Though. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. They begin the drive with Johnson, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. On second down, Johnson. And he powers his way up past the 30. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Yeah, 
The Browns on third down. They've hit at 50%, three and six to this point. This is third and four. Come on, let's go. Brian, do you they go play action. Kaiser. Over the middle complete. It's Higgins. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, are usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Again, it's Johnson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back, like it's lost, you can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. The first carry from that days. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. They'll go again with Days. And this time they're able to bottle him up as he'll stop him at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play as we have reached the two-minute warning. Two minutes remain here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this. When halftime rolls around in just a bit, we'll send you to Orlando. You will hear the dulcet tones of Mr. Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Does dulcet mean good? Yeah, it's just something that broadcasters say. It's got to be good, it's right? Be you good. tell me. Well, it's got to be good if Larry's doing it. Ten yards still left on second down. Try to throw here. Kaiser. That's complete right around the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. This offense so far on third down, they've hit four of seven. This is third and goal. Let's go! Brian 38! Brian 38! Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Yeah. 
The Browns on third down. They've hit four of seven. They're looking at a third and goal here. To throw is Kaiser. And that's going to be caught for the Browns. Touchdown. Kenny Bread from four yards out. And the Browns add six to their lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Gonzalez now to add the extra point. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14 to 6. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. And a big time mess on the return. He's out of bounds. He won't even get this back to the five yard line. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And tough starting field position here. They start this with a run for Powell. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, it didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. The stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. The Jets on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This is third and 11. This is the running back, Powell. Now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime.
All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been terrific so far. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. Taken in at the 11. Shifts by at the 15. Officially, that'll be a 63-yard punt. Well done. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. We get a glance at Duke Johnson as he heads back out onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Let's go! One, five, Kaiser now to throw on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to his tight end, David Njoku. And now it's second down. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Let's go! Here's Kaiser. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Browns on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This is third and ten. Come on, let's go. One, two, three. Now Johnson. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Cleveland. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And taken right at the 35. 12 yards on the return that time. And possession will change here with very little time remaining until halftime. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. and 10. Here's McCown. He hits Jermaine Kurz. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Go. 
So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. Not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though this offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points. So as it turns out, a two-play drive resulting in the field goal. After the made field goal, Catanzaro to boot this one away on the kickoff. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Time running down, they go down to a knee. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports halftime report. The Browns are happy to be sitting in the locker room with the lead. The Jets just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Browns with the ball early in the second. Coverage breaks down here, and this will go for a touch. They're now on top by four. First and ten, defense will get to the QB here. This goes for a loss of nine. Browns on offense midway through the second. Kaiser is on target here, and he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to the 42-yard line. Browns now later on the drive. Kaiser on the money to his receiver, Kenny Britt, and it will be caught for the score. The Browns go up by eight, so that'll do it from our EA Sports Studios. Let's get you back up to Cleveland as we rejoin Brandon and Charles. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. Here we go. Second half begins with a run by Crowell. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And while that play was unsuccessful to start the second half, I'm not sure that you just totally abandon what you do running the football. Maybe you make some adjustments in your run game and do things a little bit differently, but that doesn't necessarily mean you just go to the pass and do nothing else. 
It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push him back more. Now it's Crowell. And he'll get this one up to the 26. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave him with still about eight or nine to go on third down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The Browns on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and nine. Here we go. One, nine. Ah. Now a tenth carry for Johnson. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. They'll get six there on the run, but it brings up fourth down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the ladder 50%. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. The Jets on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This will be third and five. Now McCown. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They begin with a run by Crowell. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways at the 29. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. 
It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Second down, just one yard to go. Kaiser to throw it. He finds Kenny Brand. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. set of downs here. On the run, it's Crowell. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. now Kaiser and his throw is going to be incomplete the Browns on third down they've hit on half of them five for ten this is third and eleven Now Kaiser. Looking left side, and it's complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. That one goes for 24 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Here we go. One, two, they go back to the ground now with Crowell. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we've got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. And here comes play number six on this drive. Inside the 25 now at the 24. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Here's Johnson. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle. And oftentimes, we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. 
We saw the linebacker make the stop. On the ground, this is Johnson. And eventually stopped just shy of the goal line right around the two. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They come out with one back and three tight ends. This is Crowell, and he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. He gets it halfway there with that run. I think you play up-tempo, get right back on the line of scrimmage, and hammer out him again. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. They come out here in the eye. Second and goal, and he's in. Touchdown, Browns. It's the fullback, punching it in from a yard away. And the Browns add on to their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. Pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They dump him behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. When you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. Second down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. On third and long, it's McCown. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end could be that wide open and uncovered downfield. 
Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. And now a first down following that long gain. Here's Powell. And they'll stop him right on the midfield stripe. A gain of three, second down. Now it's second and seven. They run with Powell, and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the plane, and they're left with a third and eight. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. McCown on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense. And they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. First down carry now for Crowell. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it again with Crowell. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The offense on third down tonight. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll try to run for it with Crowell. Quick feet by Cro Isaiah Crowell. He's all alone. The 30. And all the way down to the 24-yard line. A big play there on third down for the Browns. 54 yards. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. So it'll be first down here after the run. Johnson. And down in 
inside the 15 he goes. 11 more on that one and another first down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You take in charge. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Now a second down throw for Kaiser. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And here comes play number six on this drive. Third down, Crowell. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave them with some options here on fourth and inches. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Kessler goes off on fourth down, and on comes the Browns kicker, Zane Gonzalez, for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And the kick by Gonzalez, he is good. And that will make this now a 15-point advantage. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend-but-don't-break approach, but it kept the offense out of the end zone. To the field goal. Here's Gonzalez to kick it off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The New York set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The putter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this oh, drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, <laughs> Hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Let's go. Throwing on first is McCown. The grab made by Curse over the middle. He's at the 30, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Jermaine Curse, 75 yards, and the Jets are able to cut into this deficit. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. And now in a nine point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. And it's good, so that will get them back within one score. 
One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Gets past one man, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Brandon's all about pace and tempo now for him. They've got the advantage, so I'm gonna put musical terms for you. You don't wanna go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't wanna slow it down too much. You don't wanna go lento. What you really wanna be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady, get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> Again, it's Crowell. He takes this for three to the 29. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Kaiser. Screenplay, Johnson. He gets seven out of it, and he also gets a first. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball third down, got the big completion in the pickup, fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. This one for about four up to the 40. He was close to flirting with that sideline, but able to stay in bounds like you know his coach wants him to do and keep that clock moving. Isn't it funny that we're watching this play when we had that discussion just yesterday about this? What do you do in this scenario? What do you, you know, what's your mindset? It appeared to me that he'd totally forgotten that he needed to stay in bounds. And then the last second, oh no, I better, I better get down. And he ended up doing the right thing. But at that point, maybe close to let this slip away. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Let's see what the defense dials up here. Third and four. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. He lost two, and it brings up four. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but um, 
Looked like those two were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed him for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It yeah. was real easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. McCown now on first down. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Levante David from his outside linebacker spot. He comes up to drop him for a loss of 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. That's a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works <laughs> on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. McCown looking to throw, and he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying <laughs> to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. Getting set to go here, Isaiah Crowell in the offense trot back out there. And in the early going, the running game, as we see the numbers, it just wasn't on point. Well, now it's gotten more true to form. And sometimes it takes a little while for an offensive line to get in sync. Because early in the game, defenses throw different patterns at you, different formations, different sets. And you might not block them quite the way you want to. But as you start to get into a groove and you figure out what they're doing, now it all comes together. And that's what we're seeing right now. First down throw for Kaiser. Caught here left side by Brent. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So here we go, first and 10 now. Let's go. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. He's able to get six. A nice pickup down to the 21. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. On second down, here's Crowell. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing, in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. The first down carry here for Johnson. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Oh, there's no doubt that this is a huge defensive series right here. They've got to hold them to a field goal attempt or less. Otherwise, this game just might be out of reach. Let's see if they can hunker down and get it done. Here's Johnson. He's been busy this afternoon. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Here we go. On third down, Kaiser. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Gonzalez puts this one through. And that will bump the lead up to 11. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make him score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. the field goal. Here's Gonzalez to kick it off. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. And it looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Here we go now. Blue On first down, McCown. Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. 
And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. just want to ride there a drop pass I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs so incomplete on first let's see what second down has in store McCown. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Again, it's McCown. And some room to maneuver. And he'll get it down here to the 43. going to be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Shotgun here for McCown. They almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass. To throw, it's McCown. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. All right, here we go. Boom, it. Ah! Here we go with Forte. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. They'll give him eight on the play, and they're able to convert here on fourth and inches. McCown. And this one is incomplete. He was trying to find our Darius Stewart, and that'll bring up second down. Okay, let's, let's decide here. He was open, right? Not extraordinarily open, but open enough that if you're an NFL quarterback, yeah. you've got to make that throw, right? Yeah. That's got to be complete. Nine times out of ten, that's a completed pass. Yeah, uh, he missed that one and missed it in a big way. Hurry up, hurry up, here we go. Back to the air on second down, McCown. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. It's a gain of five on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Throwing now is McCown. He's going to let it fly. And incomplete, almost intercepted. Had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. And now fourth down. Not only did they drop what looked like an interception in the end zone, they blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum. So they'll turn to the kicker again. He's been a busy man thus far. This to get it back to a one-score game.
And Catton Zero's kick is right through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. So still a small chance here with a little over 30 seconds to go, but they're definitely going to need this one to bounce their way. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical and a great spot to start this drive from here Here's a give to Crowell. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So a defensive timeout. Chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. See if they stay on the ground for second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Now the Jets are going to burn another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Kaiser. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So they decline it as that will bring up four. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties, and they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll go with a big bank, Crowell. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? 
No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And the Jets are going to get the football back. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. throw deep downfield and this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left so after all of this it comes down to one final play and just think of what it's going to be because from this distance you've got to be prepared for everything hook and laterals tip balls you name it a lot of laterals after a catch just got to be prepared stay on your feet defensively and tackle someone So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Let's go. Green, One final try for McCown. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.